Operational amplifiers are one of the components one fears the most, especially if one's a bit of a digital guy like I am. But as one of our readers has recently asked me for some help, I wanted to show a very, very cool book from the depths of my library. So say hello to the IC op -amp cookbook from Walter G. Jung. First things first. This is not a young book by any means. The one I got, I bought it off Alibris, which is quite recommendable when it comes to buying used books. There is a total of multiple different editions. The one which I have here, as you can see, is the third printing. It was printed in 1976. And I wanted to warn you, because some of my friends also bought the book, and they bought later editions, and they said that the printing was quite fuzzy, which it fortunately isn't in my case. Walt Jung divides his book into two parts. The first thing which you see here is basically a general introduction into the op-amp, like what's the ideal op-amp, what's its non-ideal properties, and blah blah blah. Of course, with the book being as old as it is, Many more recent pieces don't get discussed. So, for example, most of the circuits use the 741 or similar older components. But this is not so much the problem, because the second and really interesting part is the one on the applications. As you see here, voltage and current regulators, signal processing, then you see here audio circuit, signal generation, and some unique things. And the interesting approach about Jung is that he really gives you ready to run circuits, or let's say somewhat ready to run, if you can find the relevant components. So for example, I'm diving in here into the logarithmic converter, and I hope I can zoom in a little bit. You see here the circuit, basically is ready to go. Here our switch selectable sign changer, which belongs above, but well, here we have an actual log converter, for example. One area where Jung really deserves praise is his approach to handling topics. For example, here we've got a chapter on peak detectors. You see that he starts out with a basic peak detector consisting of the minimal amount of components and the simplest circuit possible. And then, as he moves on, you see the circuit becomes more and more complex. And sometimes he also adds pieces, such as here the buffer, which have been discussed before in the book or sometimes after. So in principle, if you are reading a whole chapter, Usually, you get a very good overview of the problem at hand. One more thing I enjoyed was the cross-reference guide. When you're repairing old instruments, sometimes you ask yourself, what the heck? And if this happens, you here have a reference chart, which shows a lot of old operational amplifiers and gives you a variety of manufacturers and this can be worth its weight in gold when you need to find a spare part for an ancient instrument which isn't available in the store anymore. And I know that this is a very short clip, but the important thing is, this book is not the only resource I use. If I have a problem with an electronic situation, a circuit or something, usually, I'll be honest, I grab myself a drink and I go to bed. And next to my bed, I've got approximately 50 books. Most of them, I bought them from a Libris or I bought them cheap at an arms library, which sometimes sells its old stock. And then I simply sit down, I search in the internet and I try to grab the big picture. And only when I've grasped the big picture, it's time to move in for the details and for understanding the actual circuit. But that is another topic. So thank you so much and see you soon.